Up next, does less mail necessarily mean less business for the U.S. Postal Service? So when you send off your seasonal good wishes this year, is it stamps or cyberspace, snail mail or email? The U.S. Postal Service is really hoping for the former, because it may be that neither snow nor rain nor heat nor gloom of night can keep your neighborhood post person from appointed rounds, but the Internet might. Tomorrow is the busiest mail day of the year. In all, letter carriers will deliver three billion cards and letters this holiday season. But still, the Postal Service lost $8.5 billion last fiscal year. Mail volume dropped 23 percent in the last three years. That does not scream job stability for your post person, the guy or gal who delivers to your mailbox six days a week. And with more than half a million employees, the USPS is the second largest civilian employer in the country after Walmart. Self-funded and broke, the USPS is considering dropping Saturday mail delivery, a move strongly opposed by the Postal Workers Union. In this age of instant and constant communication, do we really need the postman? Up next, the president of the National Association of Letter Carriers who says absolutely and in ways you may not have thought about. Joining me now, Fred Rolando, president of the National Association of Letter Carriers. When we were getting ready to do this segment, uh, someone in our office, uh, Tracy Webb, said, you know what I think of when I think of the post office? I think of that scene in Miracle on 34th Street with Natalie Wood when they're trying to prove that Santa Claus exists and all these postal workers come in carrying all the mail addressed to Santa Claus and pour it uh, into the court and say, see, the U.S. postal system thinks there is a Santa Claus, so therefore there is. Your Honor, every one of these letters is addressed to Santa Claus. And then I was looking online, another one of our uh, staffers uh, showed me a videotaped letter to Santa Claus. Um, I don't know what I want for Christmas, so get me anything you want, but not boy stuff. Um, that's the only thing I can say. So, dear Santa Claus, bye. My question here is, can the post office possibly survive the age of the internet? Oh, absolutely. What the Postal Service has to do is adapt to the change as a result of the Internet. They've adapted to so many changes over the years. Uh, what you have here, if you take the mail out of the equation, you've got this incredible universal network for the American people, probably the only universal network that goes to every home and every business six days a week. The mail is changing. You're seeing less letter mail, you're seeing more parcel post as people shop online and so forth. We're seeing the Postal Service as the... Uh, but there's FedEx and there's uh, UPS and there's places like that. Let me tell you that FedEx and, and UPS, uh, probably the fastest growing division in both of those companies, is the Postal Service delivering the last mile for them, taking their parcels door to door, because it makes more sense for us to do it, because we go to every house, they may go to every 50th house, every 100th house. So, in fact, uh, we're doing their last mile delivery, and that's a growing business for both of them. Take me forward 10 years. What other uses do you see for the U.S. Postal System? Well, 10 years from now, I'd like to see the uh, uh, Postal Service in partnership with other companies as the only delivery vehicle on the street going door to door. They could serve the, the many uh, uh, businesses that work out of their home now. They could be doing things with uh, the vehicles, with sensors on the trucks, doing things for Red Cross. They could be like, uh, reading wait, meters. Expand on that a little bit for me, the sensors on the truck. Uh, to look at, uh, th there would be the first ones on the scenes for uh, disasters and so forth, uh, uh, weather issues, because uh, they're the first ones in. They're the only ones who can get into every neighborhood on a daily basis. There's things they could do with sophisticated scanners, uh, because they go everywhere. So if a tornado were coming, and there would happen to be a postman, which there probably is most Everywhere. times in, in right. nearly every community, it would be able to pick that up and send it back to an appropriate authority. Is some of that in use now? Uh, not yet. It's something we'd certainly like to start testing rather than the short-sightedness of you know, cutting out a day of delivery. And there's kind of this pilot program going on that interests me about uh, delivering drugs, and you know, anti-anthrax drugs, for instance, in an emergency. Tell me about that as a possible use. Yes, that's known as the City Readiness uh, Initiative. We do that in conjunction with Homeland Security, the city, and law enforcement. Uh, what happens there is the letter carriers are given the emergency medicines for themselves and their families, and should an emergency come, they would uh, deliver these medicines door-to-door 
uh, in the community. It's set up in advance. Can that relationship and is that relationship being used? Is it more than just here's your mail? Very much. Letter carriers have a, a very unique privilege of going to every neighborhood, being part of every community. Uh, they know the people. They watch the children grow. They, 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 uh, they know when something's wrong in a neighborhood. And as a result of that, uh, they have the opportunity to look in on the elderly and know when something's wrong. Uh, they, they're usually the first one on a scene. They're out there saving lives, stopping crime. Uh, they're just an integral part of every community, not because they're supermen, but because we're everywhere, every day, and we know our communities. We have that relationship. Frederick Orlando, thank you so much for being with us. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for watching State of the Union. I'm Candy Crowley in Washington.